Welcome back to another episode of The Boat Boss. My name is Kim Swears and I am the host of Boat Boss. Today we are out of the office, out of the studio, and out of the industry, boating industry that is, shooting on location at one of Audi North America's most successful car dealerships. I'm welcoming Brett Macy, Executive Manager of Audi Fort Lauderdale and Audi Coral Springs. Welcome to The Boat Boss. Well, thank you. Good morning. In support of uh, breast cancer awareness, I'm supporting my pink tie here today and we'll certainly make our donation as well. I so thanks it. for having me. Well thank you. You know I'm a breast cancer survivor so I really appreciate all the support and eventually we will find a cure. There we go. So most of you in the audience are probably wondering why the boat boss is meeting with the car boss because it's out of you know obviously uncharted borders for us but the auto industry makes up about four percent of the gross domestic product and the majority of the jobs in America. So why not learn from an industry that is so successful? So we're going to be talking about cars, we're going to be talking about culture, we're going to be talking about so many great things. So we're, school is in session and you're teaching. Let's get it started. <laughs> all right, so Brett, tell us about how all this happened. And if you come to Audi Fort Lauderdale and Coral Springs, it is one of the most beautiful dealerships, modern, state of the art. How did all this happen and how did you get to Audi uh, Fort Lauderdale and Coral Springs? So about 11 years ago, I began uh, my, my career with Audi um, at Audi Coral Springs in Coral Springs, Florida, um, which was a, a new dealership that was built in a hangar building. And um, oh, wow. yeah, it was brand new from, uh, from Audi. It was uh, bought by the Cavalli Auto Group or Cavalli family. Mm -hmm. um, met the owner, Bruce Cavalli, and started in uh, Coral Springs about 11 years ago. And when yeah. you start a business, like yeah. like all of us, we are um, trying to one start with a philosophy, a business philosophy, and then create a culture, and then create high standards. Absolutely, and it does show. I mean, there is like this dealership speaks for itself. Outstanding. You've done a great job. Well, the auto industry obviously had an unprecedented event like the boat business, the pandemic. We were smooth sailing. We were gliding along, and the pandemic hit. Take us back to 2020, March of 2020. What happened? What was going on with Brett Macy and your dealerships at that time and the, and the auto industry? So I think it's one of those moments in history where everybody remembers where you're at, right? <laughs> so you're, you're in your dealership and you start getting the HR phone calls and then you start speaking with the owner and the phone calls of what's our plan, what's our strategy, what do we do? And um, at that point, there was multiple ways to go, different reactions. Some people shut everything down, some people tried to power through, some people tried to grow their business during that time. But I think the, the uneasy feeling in the beginning of the pandemic is what had everybody hesitant to make a decision. And I think good leaders um, have a tendency to make a decision, stick with their decision. Now, if it needs to be changed or altered in any way, then you, you obviously do that. Right, right. But we made a decision and uh, we stayed open. And Good for you. Yeah, the car business at that time was yeah. Uh, yeah. considered a, uh, a, a business that needed to be open during the pandemic. So we right-sized mm -hmm. and, and kept a core group of people for that time period. And we also supported the people that, that didn't stay on board mm -hmm. uh, during that time. So. We just kind of kept our foot on the gas pedal, powered through, and uh, here well, we are on the other side of it. You know, the pandemic changed our psyche. We, we went from a sharing environment, or, or if you will, space where everything was all about Uber and Lyft, and then the pandemic hit, and we were all about social distancing, quarantining, and all that stuff. How did that affect your car sales and, and the industry? And, you know, as as a whole. Right. So the first, it's a great question. The first couple months. Um, car business sales obviously declined, yeah. right? And we had uh, small staffs on the property and we just continued to stay open in service and, and parts and wholesale and distribution. Um, and then as we started to, to come back out of that and see the opportunity that there is some upside um, as people got accustomed to the changes in the environment, the way that we do business, 
uh, the digital footprint, um, obviously coming out with Audi at your door, offering to come pick up your vehicle, deliver your vehicle, sanitize your vehicle, wow. keep safety in mind of the customer, um, and create the experiment, uh, experience for the customer that was safe when they came on the property. So whether that was us doing the, the light work and picking up the vehicle and bringing it in, or that was in the service lane and creating the right environment, drop off pickup, uh, loaner cars and mm -hmm. all, all of the availability, and then just taking care of the customer during that time, making them feel comfortable, yeah. right? That they can continue to do business with us because we try to earn customers for life and, and take care of the customer and create that culture. Well, you definitely did a great job through the pandemic and it showed because I was one of your clients through that entire thing. Let's talk, it's, we're gonna shelf that for our future question, but let's talk about how price, what happened with the industry. We talked about the pricing you know, change, there was a chip shortage, so, you know, parts and all that stuff, how did that affect your business? So, the, the business in the first year of, of um, COVID, that business model is quite different than the business model we're running right. today, right? Because now we face new challenges, availability of vehicles, chip shortage, uh, restructuring of price on vehicles, uh, manufacturers increase in pricing, availability to, to the consumer, uh, the online buying experience, buy the vehicle from your home, buy the vehicle with us online, buy the vehicle in person. So there's so many strategies that a lot of people have adapted in the car business or have changed their philosophy or, or what they offer to the customer. And we are much more flexible um, and now it's all about the customer experience and Absolutely. trying to meet the demand of the customer. Where would they like to purchase the car? That's what we try to ask our team, right? In a, in a group meeting or in a, in a management meeting or in an all staff meeting, how do we better serve the customer? Where do we meet the customer? Wherever they want to be met. Well, it's a great, you know, I, I was saying, you know, it's all about the human experience sure. versus, you know, the business experience or, or customer experience and you've definitely capitalized on that. Um, let's go. Let's talk about culture now. Culture is big, and I know because when I um, when I come into your dealership, you know, being a dealer principal at FB Marine Group, which is my home base, you know, I always try to, you know, win them over to the other side. You know, come over to the marine industry. It's such a great industry, and they love Brett. They love Audi. They love you. They drank your Kool Aid. How did you create such an amazing culture here? How, how did that happen? Well, I think the goal of any leader is to create an environment for, for their team and their people. Um, and if you put your people first, right, we have the saying here at, at our company, people, process, right, performance, pay plans, and then we just want people to have fun. Right. So if you create that, and what I mean by people first, and then you add the process to the, uh, to the equation, so we have good people, we have excellent processes, our people perform, we have a good time. And then as a leader, I think it's important that you always show your team members that you're willing to do their job right. or be with them, okay, right? So if it's whether it's in the service lane, right. meet and greet customers, uh, walk around the property with the maintenance person, show them things, do things, jump in, help out. If they see that you will do what they're asked, Take or they're, the trash. do anything, yeah, <laughs> sweep up, move the furniture, whatever, whatever it is. But if they see that you're willing to participate in their level of their position and their success, I think that just gets people to jump on board with you. That creates culture, right, and that's our number one goal, I think, in any business. Absolutely, right? yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, I'd like to talk about my customer experience that I had on the road, you know, with Audi. I was in, in the demo you know, stage where I was looking at moving from my Tesla to the e-tron, and you know, we had some challenges, sure. and I wasn't sure that Audi was the right fit for me, but it was the customer experience, not only in Audi North America, but at the dealership that won me over. And that's really where um, you build your character and you actually show that you're in it to win it for the customer experience. So congratulations to you on that. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of places have a, a, a statement, right? We take care of the customer or customer first, but actually living that out to where you get the customer to have that experience at your dealership or, or in a different business, that, that's the difference, right? If your people understand your mission statement, but they don't carry it out, well, then you have a default there. And if you get your team to, to understand your mission statement and then understand how to create that culture or how to create that experience for the customer, I think it's a win-win. Good for you. Yep. 
sure you don't want to come over to the marine industry? Well, that's what I'm a little nervous today <laughs> because I have a feeling that there might be some of our employees that might get invited to the marine industry. Uh, you're, nah. uh, you're, it's safe. I'm sure that they'll, that they'll stick with you. Well, let's, let's talk about you. Sure. And then uh, let's talk about your love for the water. You're from South Florida. Born and raised. Born and raised. 305 954. I'm a 954. 954. Fort That's Lauderdale. our area code in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. So you've been born and raised on the water. Talk to us about what boat you own and, and what's your favorite boating destination. So I was lucky enough that my parents allowed me to, uh, to work, right? And then create, we had a lawn business, we had a pressure cleaning business, I was a busboy at a restaurant. And my parents, I always wanted a Boston whaler, 13 foot Boston whaler Very cool. as a kid. So my parents came to me and said, look, you come up with half the down payment and we'll finance the other half of the boat. Good for them. So my parents financed it. I still have the, the, the card, the loan card, which <laughs> kept track of my payments each month until I, I paid off the boat. But I had a 13-foot uh, Boston Whaler as a kid um, and I just would hydroslide and wakeboard and go surfing. Yeah. Um, and I just grew up on the water. My parents were avid boaters, um, always enjoyed being on the water. That's kind of, everybody has to have a love for something outside of what you do as a profession. So that's, that's how I got involved in it. Good yeah. for you. Yes. Good for you. Well, that's, you know, if anything, that for parents, that loan card, oh, yeah. that is awesome. It I'm, is. I'm definitely going to do that with my family. That's Life lesson. Life. Yeah, yep. that's great. So let's talk about cross-marketing. So sure. important for you. You and I are working together, the Boat Boss, uh, FB Marine Group, the Marine Industry, Audi, um, Fort Lauderdale, Audi, Coral Springs. We're working on a Drive Smart from the Start campaign, which is about teaching first-time boaters and people that aren't really experienced in it, even if they are, you know, boaters, to be better boaters. So what, why, why cross-market with the marine industry? What, what is your reason for it? Well, I think there's a lot of synergies in, in our business, right? And from marine industry to, to the car business, for example, most people that are in the boating industry also have a little bit of a love for automobiles. <laughs> yeah. So, or, or they prefer to have nice vehicles. Um, I think that goes hand in hand and no better brand than Audi, right? For Audi to, to mirror up with the boat industry, and that's why we're such big fans of mm -hmm. participation in the, uh, in the boat show, the Fort Lauderdale boat yeah. show. And we try to have a presence there, have our cars on display, have people there walk around, introduce, you know, especially the new EV vehicles for Audi. Yep. So that, that's our plan for this year. Um, but I believe to our direct answer, I think there's so many correlations of, of connecting the marine industry to the auto industry. Absolutely. Well, we can't thank you for your support. I thank you, you know, Boat Boss, and, and obviously the people that we're going to touch together in our partnership. Sure. We're going to make our waters a little bit safer. That's the goal. That's the goal. And yes. hopefully we'll bring in more clients to own Audis. That's, that's the number one goal, right? Number one. Right, number one. Well, create safety first. Of course. I, I think it's important that that's we it. get the message out there because so many people have entered the boating industry, which you've seen the yes. growth. Oh, absolutely. Um, and not all of them are, are safe boaters. No, we've seen that. And we've seen that. So we, we need to uh, head up that initiative yeah. and try, join forces. So just so the audience knows, we'll be rolling that out in early 2022. So look for that online. It's a Drive Smart from the Start campaign with uh, Audi. Pearl Springs, Audi Fort Lauderdale, FB Marine Group, the marine industry, and a lot of other players involved. We're really excited about that, so thanks for that. All right, now yes. we're going to talk about the 1,000-pound uh, the gorilla in the, in the room, which is workforce development. Um, I can say, being a client of your dealership, that you have definitely built one of the most inclusive and diverse workforces, and congratulations on that. Thank you. So is that something that you said to yourself, you know, how did you come up with the with the um, idea or or the forward thinking to go out to a di diverse group of individuals and prospect them in to work for your dealership? Well, anybody in the auto industry will probably answer the question with a similar answer, which is, how do you grow people within your company that are already know your culture mm -hmm. and already know your philosophy? Mm -hmm. So. When we have our meetings as a management team, we try to identify people that are already on our team that we feel that can grow with us as a company. And if we give them the opportunity and we do the teaching or we send them to the classes or, or, or the training or have somebody or a consultant come in and work with them one-on-one -on -one, or somebody that has a lot of experience in that field or the parts department or service department, 
Um, we try to grow within first mm -hmm. to maintain that culture. Great. So that, that's our philosophy. Um, I don't believe there's any car dealership or, or marine company that has people calling every day, submitting their resumes yeah. to become technicians. Right. Absolutely. So how do you how do you get technicians? How do you grow them? How do you get people interested in that position in a car dealership? So those are some of our challenges. Um, and we try to do that through joining programs, joining forces with other companies, and, and also developing our own. Well, that's fantastic. And I have to say, I was blown away, like I said, walking to this dealership, and the first person that I saw was a female service con uh, coordinator. Yes. And then a service manager, female uh, woman service manager, and a parts manager. And our parts manager. So Correct. blown away. Yes. All extremely smart, driven. Um, just deliver the mission and the culture. You can see it. It was just emulating out of them. So great job on that. We are going to actually bring them on now and have them talk about their and how they got into the industry. And we're going to wrap it up. Perfect. Okay, we have Marsala, Christina, and Nicole. Amazing women that work for Brett Macy. Well, welcome to the boat, boss. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Having us. So, so tell me what you guys do. What do you do? I am the parts manager. I manage the parts department over here. We're a small store um, of two counter guys and myself. Excellent. Christina? Service department, technicians, advisors. So you're the manager? Yes. I'm the manager. And Nicole? Uh, service advisor. So I am directly with the customer and between say, them and the technician. When I came into the dealership recently for my service and I was, you know, obviously you were assigned to me, I stood there like, I don't know if you saw my face, and I was like, couldn't believe what I was seeing. It's a good thing Brett Macy is a friend of mine, but she'd be working for me now. Okay. <laughs> but I have to say, you know, congratulations. I mean, working in this industry yeah, as yeah. a woman is fantastic. And, and as I mentioned earlier, workforce development is big for me. It's an initiative that is near and dear to my heart. How did you get into the industry? Let's talk with you, Marcella. How did that happen? Um, passions, are, uh, carts have always been my passion. It's um, something that my husband and I actually bond with. We work in cars together, we get down and dirty, and now we have two kids and uh, we're passing the passion along and just working on the cars together. My, my daughter actually loves it more than my son, love it. which is, she has her own little plastic tools and she, we're doing a motor swap in one of my cars and she just goes there with the <laughs> screwdriver and she loves it herself more than my son and she's only three. That's fantastic. Christina? Same as me, my son also is in the, starting the car industry in school too. So he's in the technical school, so it's like something that started super young, which uh, I love it. You've I love been in it. the business 24 years. 24 so. years. It's I turned 24 you years. You 24 years old. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And Nicole, uh, I know you and I already talked yeah, about this. Yeah, same. I mean, I grew up just with a passion for cars. I hung around with all the kids in the neighborhood, and you know, all the older kids had their modded race cars, mm -hmm. and I just was immediately attracted to it. So I was a greeter at my first dealership when I was 18 years old. So, so you've worked your way up. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and that's a tribute to Brett Macy and the dealership here that they've developed from within. They identify, obviously, that all of you had potential and worked and set a really strong development path to the positions that you're at. And who knows, the sky's the limit, right? Of course. Right. So one last question, and we're going to wrap this up. Is they have to get back to work. How? <laughs> what? What advice can you give to someone like a woman or or anyone? You know, we're looking at diverse and inclusive workforce. There's people that might not consider this as a, as a profession. What advice can you give anyone that's thinking about the car business or the boat business for that matter? Uh, yeah, for me, it would be confident, believe in yourself, and go straight to that direction, and you'll be there. You'll get it. Excellent. And, and Marcella, you had mentioned you're so organized. Is that a big part of what you do? Definitely. I feel like organization, especially with a lot of parts being on back order, you have to know um, when something goes on back order, sometimes it goes straight to Germany. Sometimes you have to request it from another dealer. So then you have to go back a week later, check on it. Your invoices have to be on point. Your accounting has to be on point. You have to make sure that the guys give you the correct paperwork to make sure the PLs are done. So organization has a lot to do with it, and it's things that are behind the scene that you don't really see past the two guys at the counter. That's awesome. I love it. Good thing Brent Macy's my good friend. So, and, and then Nicole. I would just say don't let the challenges scare you. Um, I have men that come in here as customers, and this happened from the minute I was an advisor, and they look at me like I don't know what I'm talking right, about. Right. And they're almost, um, you know, they second guess wanting to work with me. And then I just show up and exactly like she said, like be confident. And then they realize that I know what I'm talking about. And they're like, oh, 
a woman right, start exactly, telling me yeah. about my car. <laughs> so yeah, it's an experience for sure. Believe in yourself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, hats off to all three of you and, you. and keep keep the word going and you know, be an ambassador for the industry and for people like us and encourage as many people as you can to thank consider you. this as a profession. And thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. What an awesome show that was. It's probably one of the best ones yet. Brett, thank you for your time, for your people, for your wisdom. Really look forward to what the future holds for you and the car business. I have to say, as I always do, we gotta get you back to work because you got more cars to sell and service. But as I always say, whether you live, work, or play on the water, just get on the water because there's nothing better than a lifestyle on the water. Brett, thank you very thanks much. for your time. Appreciate yeah. it and best of luck and have a great Fort Lauderdale boat show and a great 2022. We'll see you at the show. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care.